This is gonna be a fun one. How's it going, everybody? I started this couch project a few weeks ago by installing the quick access safe on the arm of the couch and then asking you fine people what to install next. And you did not disappoint. You guys have been giving me so many great ideas, some of which I've already installed. But every once in a while, you come across one of those ideas and you're just like, Yes! <laughs> I received a fantastic idea from one of my subscribers to install a long safe under the cushions of the couch. Dude, you are a genius. Really quick before we get started, go ahead and gently cut open the like button and install a hidden safe inside it. And if you did it right, it should turn blue. And go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. When I was looking for a safe that I can install under the cushions, I had a lot of different options to look into, but I ended up coming across this one. Now this is a safe that sells from a company called Mautech. Believe it or not, it sells for under $200 on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description for anybody who's interested in looking at it. Most of the time when you buy a safe off a website like Amazon, you're talking about something that's more like a glorified filing cabinet. Most cheap safes use an incredibly thin metal and a fancy lock, but it's not much more than a filing cabinet with a lock on it. However, I would say that this safe is a small step up from that, but it's still not going to be as safe as something like a large Fort Knox safe. If I had something as simple as a cutoff wheel and a grinder, I could probably get into this in about 10 minutes. But the way I see it, this safe is not really about that. For me, it's more about knowing whether or not someone has been inside the safe and also keeping dangerous items away from little fingers. Also, having more storage in more places is great as well. That being said, I'm actually very impressed with the construction of this safe because it is a lot thicker steel than you would normally see on cheap safes. The outside dimensions of this safe are 51 inch long by about 15 and a half inches wide, and it's about six inches tall. The inner dimensions of the safe are 15 and a half inch long by 15 and a quarter inch wide and about five and a half inches tall. Surprisingly, they did use a 10 gauge steel construction and it weighs just under 80 pounds. This safe is designed to be installed into furniture, but you can really put it anywhere you want. When I was looking at it, I figured it would be so easy to just place it in the bottom of a trunk at the end of a bed or something like that. But this thing has so many options to it and it's really easy to install. I decided to put this safe into my couch because reasons. I started by removing all of the fabric in the base of the couch and removing the springs. This went pretty well, but the hard part was removing all of the little brackets that were holding the springs on. This part took a little while. It was pretty obvious once the springs were removed that the bracing was going to be in the way, but I had already planned on removing these. If you cut them down the middle, they can be pretty easily wrenched out. Hey, check it out. Free oak. So, I was wondering for a little while what exactly I needed to do once I got to this step, but I knew that once I opened it up, I would have a much better idea as to what to do. When you take these bracings out of the couch, you have a board here that is gonna end up very flimsy. This is usually the board that will break on your couch if you have one that breaks. That's almost always the one. So it has to be supported, and if it's not supported, it'll have so much bend in it that if you jump on it, it'll break. I've decided I'm just gonna put some feet in the back acting as extra feet. You'll never see these from the front of the couch. I think I'm gonna end up putting one, but if that ends up still being flimsy on the sides, I'm gonna end up putting three, but I think I can get away with just doing one. You could do this with something as simple as a two by four, but I ended up using this pallet beam to make the foot on mine, and it just gets screwed into place. The upholstery work is always interesting. I used the excess vinyl on the front of the couch to wrap around the framing of the couch and then just stapled it into place. I decided to keep all of the cushioning underneath when I did this. If it ever gets in the way, it doesn't hurt to cut it out of the way, but in my case, I knew this would look awesome when I was done. <laughs> that looks so good. The next step was to cut a piece of plywood to span the gaps on the inside of the couch. This was easy enough, but what was interesting about it is I ended up having to cut some 45 degree angle corners on the front so that it wouldn't interfere with the vinyl the way I had it laying. That's one of those things that it's almost impossible to plan for because I didn't see it until I started laying the plywood. But when I was all done wrapping it in fabric, it ended up looking amazing. <laughs> It's working! Once I had it matching the empty space, I needed to figure out where the safe needed to go. This is one of the fun parts of this method because you get to place oh it in any God. orientation you want. I would suggest centering it as best as possible, but there's really no reason that you can't have it off to one side or the other or maybe towards the back or something. Actually, if I had placed this closer to the back, the install would have gone a lot smoother, but it's completely up to the builder how you want to install it. Then I needed to install the box that houses the safe. I needed it to be the same height as the safe, minus the thickness of the top layer of 
of plywood. The trick is to make the entire thing flush when I'm done. This box ended up being way too tight, and what I should have done was take it back apart and add a few shims, but I decided not to, and once again, this made the install a bit more difficult than it needed to be. Uh -oh. So if I ever do this again, next time I'm going to give myself an extra 16th inch of play because the fabric ends up taking up about that much space and the install would go so much smoother. The plywood on the bottom of the box isn't too important, it's just there to make sure that the safe is held up off the ground. It can really just be made out of any thickness of any material, honestly. After I had it in place, I decided it needed to be raised up a little bit to the natural height of the couch. If I was going to do this project again, I'd probably use something like a few layers of 3 quarter inch plywood instead of these 2 by 4s because it would have made the install just a little bit easier. But the 2 by material definitely made it very rigid when I was done. My goal is to make this couch so durable that my kids can still jump on it when I'm done. I really started enjoying working with fabric in these projects. I had this old curtain laying around from a project that I did more than 10 years ago and it fit this safe project so well I just had to use it. It's surprisingly simple to add fabric like this to a project. Just go around the perimeter of the box with staples and fold the corners like a present. If you pull the fabric too tight, you'll end up with wrinkles, and if you don't pull hard enough, the fabric won't have any tension, then once again you'll end up with wrinkles. I found out that if I just worked quickly and pulled an average amount on the fabric before each staple, it turned out perfect. No need to overcomplicate it. This is why I hate the Porter Cable staple guns. Don't buy the Porter Cable staple gun. Porter Cable is a great company, makes good products, but their staple gun is just crap. I'm not the first person to say that either. I've heard that before. About break the staple gun every time I have to take one of those out of there. Just like with a few of my other projects, I found out the best way to end up with a clean transition from the edge of the safe to the fabric was to cut a large X corner to corner inside the box, making sure to stop about a quarter of an inch from the inside corner of the box. This will give you a perfect transition from the fabric to the safe. Then you just cut off all the excess. All right, now for the moment of truth. The way I designed this, it had to be slipped into the back support and then pushed back until it fell into the front support. It took a little bit of persuading, but when it fell into place, I was ecstatic. All right, this is it. You ready? Woo! Ha ha ha! I did it! Beautiful. Oh my gosh, that is getting heavy. At this point, it only needed a few screws to be held in place. Then, it was finally time to install the 80 pound safe into its final resting place. Once this goes in, I'm not going to lift the couch anymore. <laughs> this also took a lot of persuasion. <laughs> Remember when I said I should have added some shims? Yes! Oh, it's so perfect! Ah! <laughs> After everything was in place, I did notice that the box was so tight that it was causing the safe door to bind with the back part of the cover. The safe honestly worked fine until I jammed it into this box, so don't blame the safe for that. That's completely my fault. I'm still happy with the way it's built. Okay, I like it. I definitely like this. I like this a lot. This is amazing. It works surprisingly well under the cushions too. I love this thing. I would say that one of the biggest downsides to this safe is that it isn't a very quick access safe. The problem is that you need two separate keys to get in. I ended up putting my keys in the quick access safe that I installed on the arm of the couch in an earlier video. This works great for me, but if you want to keep your keys on a key ring, you'll want to make sure that at least one of the keys is detachable, otherwise you'll need to unring one of the keys each time you want to get inside the safe. If you want to see how we installed the quick access safe into the arm of the couch, I'll leave a link to that at the end of the video. The coolest thing about this safe is it has a nearly unlimited number of things that you can secure inside it. For YouTube's algorithm's sake, you'll have to use your imagination a bit, but I've found it can hold all sorts of things, such as small cookies, travel cookies, 
expensive cookies, even large cookies. But no matter what you decide to store and secure, only you'll know what's inside it until the ATF breaks down your door and takes all of your assault cookies. Oh. Well, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to share this video with anyone you think would love one of these. And don't forget to gently cut open the like button and install a hidden safe in it. And if you did it right, it should turn blue. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. Thank you all for watching. Catch you all next time.